Okay. Well, no, that's classical conditioning. Close. It's the other one. Um, B.F. Skinner, our best friend Skinner, B.F. Skinner, is credited with operant conditioning. Okay. So that's one thing you guys are going to want to know is that B.F. Skinner is credited with the theory of operant conditioning. And there are four different parts to operant conditioning. Somebody give me one of them. If I give you one, will you guys be able to get the rest? Positive reinforcement, that is correct. Thank you, Frank. So we have positive reinforcement. <coughs> That's the first one. What is the ne another one? Negative. Thank you. Negative reinforcement. What's another one? Punishment. Punishment. Good job, guys. And what's the last one? This one's hard to remember. Beautiful. You guys are doing great. Okay, so positive reinforcement, very quickly, is when you get a reward for doing something good. So this is, you get money for grades. So we're going to just put money, grades. So you guys get good grades, your parents will pay you for this. 25 bucks for every A, 15 bucks for every B. So then, are we? Are you more likely to do that behavior or less likely to do that behavior? More. 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 So we're encouraging behavior. So I'm just going to put an E for encouraging. Negative reinforcement. Watch. Sorry. Uh, negative reinforcement. Can you take away something? Exactly. So let's say if you guys get good grades again, so we're going to just put a G grades. We're going to take away chores. So no chores. So it's still a good thing. A very bad connotation because it says negative. Don't think of it as good and bad. Think of it as adding something versus taking something away. So are you more or less likely to get good grades if it means you don't have to do chores? More. So we're still encouraging behavior here. <clears throat> so um, another great one is some of you guys this past week had to take the OGTs. You guys have been told if you do really good on the OGTs, you guys won't have to take one of your exams. So exam exemptions are a great example of negative reinforcement. Someone give me an example of punishment. What? Close, but that's going to be bumped into a mission training. Spanking. Your parents tell you not to play with knives. They catch you playing with knives, they're going to spank you as a result. Are you guys more likely or less likely to play with knives again? Less, less likely. So we're going to discourage behavior. So we're going to put a D for discourage. Then, Caleb, what would you say for uh, omission training? Grounding. Grounding. It's a great example for omission training. Grounded. So if you're grounded, your parents catch you playing with those knives, they take away your cell phone for a week. So there is a difference. Punishment, they're adding on something. So you got, you got spanked. Or um, you have to, uh, or you get soap in the mouth. They're not taking anything away from you. But in omission training, they're taking something away. So they're taking away your cell phone. If you get a timeout, they're taking away your play time. So omission training is something is getting omitted, which omit means to take away. So, so your cell phone is getting omitted, your TV time, your computer, it's all getting omitted. So do you guys have any questions on operant conditioning? Okay. Next one thing we're going to move on to is classical conditioning. So does anyone know who is credited with the theory of classical conditioning? Ivan Pavlov. Ivan Pavlov. Very good, Paige. So, I, Ivan Pavlov. So. His famous experiment is he made his dog 
salve, at the sound of a bell. And there are five parts that he uh, determined were important to classical conditioning. Somebody give me one of them if you remember what they are. The neutral stimulus, that is good. So we're just going to put an end. What else? Unconditioned stimulus. And I'm just putting the letters. You guys need to write them down. That's fine. Unconditioned stimulus. What else? Unconditioned response. Unconditioned response. What's the fourth one? Conditioned stimulus. And what's the last one? Conditioned response. And Marcella, you said something really smart. Exactly. When you're trying to identify, because I know on Wednesday, one of your questions is you guys will get a small little prompt, and you guys are going to be asked to identify the unconditioned stimulus, the unconditioned response, the neutral conditioned stimulus, and the conditioned response. Easy as points ever. If you figure out what the neutral or the conditioned stimulus are, they're the same thing. So let me see if I can get an example up here really quick. example here. So let's go through and let's identify the many different parts of classical conditioning. So Rebecca wanted to teach her cat to be afraid of her favorite toy. Every time that her cat went near the toy, Rebecca blew an air horn. So what is the unconditioned stimulus? What's going to cause an automatic reaction in there? The air horn. Very good. So I'll have to change this for your class tomorrow since this was one of the Jeopardy things. So what is the cat's response? What is the automatic response when that cat hears the air horn? Fear. Fear. But what is the cat afraid of? The horn. The horn. So make sure that on Wednesday, when you guys have to do one of these examples, that you put why the cat is afraid or why that response happened. What is the neutral stimulus? What had nothing to do with the experiment. What wouldn't cause a reaction out of the cat? The toy. The toy. So, like Marcella said, the neutral stimulus always becomes the conditioned stimulus. So what's the conditioned stimulus? The toy. The toy. So Casey, what's the conditioned response? Fear. But why is she afraid this time? Because So what's she afraid of now? The toy. The toy. So she is afraid of the toy. Because, okay, so you got it right. The cat now associates the toy with an air horn. Because every time that cat went near the toy, it heard an air horn and it got scared. So now every time it sees the toy or wants to go close to it, it's scared of the toy. It will no longer play with that toy. Very good. Do you guys have any questions on that? If you guys remember on your note sheet on the back, there are examples of them. You guys can just cover up the answers because you guys should have the answers there and redo them. Um, so, uh, 